These are unexpected gravestone and cemetery stories. From 2022, when Rosie Grant says a recipe is to die for, she's not kidding. Today we're gonna make a glazed blueberry pie. She gets her recipes from gravestones. This is the grave of Kate Andrews. She has a famous fudge recipe. Les Trent has more. You may not know this, but besides birth and death dates and rest and peace messages, some of the dearly departed are leaving their favorite recipes on tombstones across America. There's an ice cream recipe in Maine and snickerdoodles in California. People are being remembered the way they want to, and it just so happens that people have a special recipe. Rosie found this tombstone recipe in Brooklyn. Naomi Odessa Miller Dawson is buried here. On top of the headstone, her recipe for spritz cookies. I was like, oh, I'll try to cook it. I'm curious what these cookies taste like. The cookies are incredible. Hi. Rosie met with Naomi's son, Richard, and her granddaughter, Nahila. Every Thanksgiving and Christmas, Naomi baked her special cookies for the family. This recipe was a closely guarded secret with my mother. She did not give it out. People would ask for the recipe and she would say no. So she took it to the grave, literally. Now her secret recipe is out and Rosie tried it. They smell amazing. She would be happy to know that she's remembered because of her baking. Grandma would be proud. <laughs> From 2023, where could you visit a classic car museum, a tropical garden, and pay your respects to soccer legend Pele? The world's tallest cemetery. Located in Santos, Brazil, the Ecumenical Memorial Necropolis is 14 floors high and was the first vertical cemetery in Latin America. Guinness World Records says it's currently the tallest in the world. After Pele's coffin processed through the streets, the football superstar was interred in a private ceremony. Pele's mourners can visit the ninth floor, reportedly chosen to honor his father, who once wore a number nine jersey. In May of 2024, this mom went to the cemetery to visit her three children, who were killed by a drunk driver. She's not just laying flowers. She's reliving their most cherished memories using a new trend. Les Trent has more. So how does it work? These medallions are affixed to the headstone and they have a QR code on them. All you do is scan that QR code with your phone and immediately treasured moments appear before your eyes, giving you mini biographies of the dearly departed. We have a lot of families that really do it to help bring kind of closure to what they're going through. Christina Skew's husband, Daniel, passed away from Huntington's disease. The QR code has helped keep Daniel's memory alive for her children. I love that anybody that goes to his gravesite, they can get to know the man that's, that's laid to rest there. Not just a name and some dates, but they get to know him. Oh, he, he would love it. In 2022, this was the eyebrow-raising tombstone for Stephen Owens of Iowa. Forever in our hearts, until we meet again, cherish memories known as our son, brother, father, papa, uncle, friend, and cousin. The first letter of each phrase on the stone ends up spelling out F off. Owen's family says he often said it in jest. It was definitely a, his term of endearment. Um, if he didn't like you, he didn't speak to you. Um, it's just who he was. You easily riled up. Yeah. And, uh, it was always uh, kind of a I don't know, a goal of some sort to get him to tell you to. It's something his family did as a humorous way to remember him. But cemetery staff were not wild about it, saying profanity has no place where loved ones are laid to rest. No one's forcing anyone to come out and look at it. Um, that's a choice that you make. Um, we didn't do it to offend anyone, to make mm -hmm. anyone mad, to hurt anyone's feelings. We did it because it was our father and we love him. And mm -hmm. um, that's the way we remember him. So this is so that long after the burial, they can keep coming back here. Richland Cemetery in Pennsylvania has created a way for grievers to connect with loved ones who have passed, a telephone. And as they visit, they can stop and use the phone to make a call to their loved ones, say the things they wanna say, tell them about their day. Maybe there have been grandchildren born, or any kind of news. It's really just to connect. The idea was inspired by an installation in Japan that helps people grieve tsunami victims. And I thought this would be something really neat to bring here. Ginger says not everybody will get the appeal of the nostalgic setup, but for those who do, it's a great way to get closure. 
uh, my grounds crew said that they have seen people at the phone using it. So I think that's really special. It's really neat that they feel comfortable enough to use it. Our commitment to the people who have entrusted care to us doesn't end with the last shovel of dirt on the grave, so to speak. The way we process death and the dead has evolved as a new generation of funeral directors shared with Inside Edition Digital. Because we have so much more access to refrigeration, we don't need to embalm as many bodies. Fewer people are wanting to be embalmed here in the United States. We are one of the only countries that still has embalming as one of our main methods of disposition. A lot of places in the world have completely turned over to cremation. What you can do with cremated remains is just completely endless. One of the things that comes to mind is a space burial. We have ignition and liftoff of it. Where they took a small amount of cremated human remain and strapped it onto a spaceship and sent it out into space. So people are becoming a lot more creative in the way that we dispose of our dead. Our generation is now being introduced to these new methods. There's also newer technologies. Alkaline hydrolysis is one of them. Sometimes you hear it referred to as water cremation or aquamation or even resumation. There's things like mushroom suits. A burial suit infused with mushroom spores. The mushroom death suit. We share a common desire to understand and accept death and to minimize the impact of our death on the environment. A lot of the other alternative methods actually deal with cremated remains. Recomposition over in Seattle and Washington, they are, for lack of a better term, doing composting with human remains. It's called natural organic reduction, and they have a really, really wonderful space where the body can be placed among natural organic materials with nothing but your birthday suit in about 30 days everything that you came with will be returned to soil, and that soil can go on to nourish local forests or even be returned to your family so that you can truly be that tree you want it to be. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andrea Swindle.